Okay, so different types of samples require different kinds of sample preparation. And uh, the majority of the methods we are going to look here will be associated with liquid uh, or layer samples in the liquid form. But we also come across samples that are gases or solids. Uh, actually, gases is one of the kind of most complicated samples uh, from the perspective that we, it's kind of hard to handle because we don't see them mostly. Um, but under gases, we could also think of all types of volatile organic substances. And these kinds of compounds we could track. Uh, that means that we could most simply use a trap and pump the, the gas that we want to analyze through this trap. And with different processes, we could fixate the compounds we are interested in uh, into these traps. The simplest ones are cool traps. So this means that if the organic, uh, volatile organic materials um, have uh, not too low boiling point, then by decreasing the temperature, we could uh, trap these uh, compounds as liquids, for example. Uh, but we could also be based on um, chemical interactions, this trapping. So for example, we could um, fill these traps with uh, solid materials that simply absorb our water light. Or it could also be a liquid waste, waste trapping, which means that we bubble our sample essentially through a solution. And this solution then is able to, for example, dissolve our analyte. And then we could later analyze this liquid. Uh, in case of solid trapping, we can then further uh, take this trap, uh, this solid material that has now also trapped our analytes and could. Um, work further with the solid materials either to dissolve the compounds from this solid material or maybe um, heat it for heat this solid material so that the analytes would uh, dissolve again and then guide them for example to gas chromatography or in case of liquid phase trapping we could also uh, for example treat the sample as it would be a liquid so do some concentration steps or do some purification steps and then analyze it the same way we do, would do with a liquid sample. Uh, with uh, gas samples, we could sometimes also think about, think about suspensions. Here, for example, belong all kinds of materials that are on the particles in the air. So for example, if we are um, investigating uh, air pollution and we are interested in, in compounds that could be in the soot particle. So what we would actually do is that we would first use a large volume uh, air filtration. So we would pump a large volume of air through the filter. Uh, this filter would be having small enough pores so that the soot particles would uh, remain on or in the filter. And then we would take this filter and treat this as a solid sample. Uh, we could also, if we are looking at something that is present in these gas samples or suspension samples at higher concentrations, then we could also centrifuge the, um, the uh, particles, the suspension particles from our um, air, air or gas or suspension samples, or well, as well as use the sedimentation, and then deal with this again as it would be a solid sample. So actually, mostly in case of gases and uh, suspensions, we would um, first pre-treat the sample so that we could deal with it either as it would be a liquid or as it would be a, a solid sample. We could also, in some cases, analyze the gases directly without the need for this kind of sample preparation. And this is, for example, something that is done uh, with some remote sensing in case of industrial process uh, monitoring. For example, in some industrial processes, we could use IR uh, to remotely sense uh, what um, gases exactly are being produced. 